Hey everyone. So apparently my uh, what I'm calling a heartbeat stitching in my trilobite weave has been pretty popular on Facebook lately. A lot of people are asking me how I weave it so as to make it look nice and uh, consistent all the way through. So I went ahead and I put together another trilobite. This one I'm going to be giving my cousin who's a paramedic. Uh, finally got him to send me my size so I can make you guys this video. Um, I have about four to five feet of 095 red uh, micro cord, and this is for an approximately nine inch long bracelet for my cousin. Um, I know that I kind of reversed one of my ties on one end, but I think it'll still look okay uh, regardless of that, as that's usually worn down on the bottom of your wrist anyway. Um, so. When I start, I'll start on the back side, and all I want to do is pick out one of the first couple center stitches so that I can lock my cord in place on the back. And the best way I've found to do that is to really bend over your end so that you can get the, the different cords to spread apart. And then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and grab one, just go straight underneath it, pull my cord through, and I'll leave about a half inch or three quarters of an inch at the end. And just for safety, I'm gonna go ahead and do a second one so that I know that it won't pull out on me when I'm working on the other side. Not everybody does this. Everybody has their own preference on how they lock in their cords. But I have so little that'll show on the back side, it won't hurt me to have that little bit. Now I want to get back to the front, but I want to get back to the front somewhere right in the very end here because I want to make sure I start at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spread apart my middle pieces, the two center cords, core cords, and I am going to work my way across and I've got a feel where the cords come apart. So I don't want to pierce a cord, so I just work my way back and forth till I get between a pair, and I'm going to pull it through to the front side. Now you can see that all that will show on the back side of my start is one over that, and then the very end will be melted right there, or you could pull it off into the corner and melt it down there. Now, to show you the uh, original that I made that everybody's fallen in love with right there's the pattern we're looking for all right it's a very simple pattern it's very similar to the heartbeat you would see on a echocardiogram or an EKG monitor or a heart monitor and the way I do it is I start my very first one by crossing two of my center cords and again, splitting right down in between my two centers. And this time it happens to bring me right next to where my start cords are, which is actually probably a good thing, because it might help me tie it in more. Now I'm watching this side and pulling slowly, so I make sure I stay in the middle. And I'm going to go right back through on the opposite end of the cord that I just went next to. So I'm just wrapping one cord and I'm going to come right back out where I went through. And on the back side, all that's going to leave me is as if I had just wrapped just the one cord. And every time I do a wrap, that's all I'm going to do is wrap one cord. Oops. So after I did two across, I'm sorry for the shaking and the angle. I've got my phone hanging up to do this for you. After I've got two across, I'm going to go ahead and go up, up here to my upper uh, row, all right, which is just straight up the same one, and I'm going to go right between, but before the center cord of this side. I always want to stay inside my center cords for this one so that I have that nice edge. And once again, I'm just going to come over here and go one over from where I was and back at an angle so that I come right back through the same hole that I went through except that again on the back side I've only wrapped one cord on the back 
now I want to go down and I want to go down and follow this line all the way down to the bottom. Alright, so I'm going to follow that until I get right down here to the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm finding my hole and I'm going to find right between the cords to come out the bottom side. And I'm going to keep following that same pattern of looping. Ooh, got a knot here. Follow that same pattern of looping just one cord on the back side and bringing me back to the same hole. And that lets me continue to follow my line as if it never stopped at each point that I want to. So now I'm on the lower section of it and again here's the original. All right. So now I'm just going to go back up to my center following again that line straight back up to the middle and you'll find that you always have to go at a bit of an angle and if you're having trouble finding the center of your your core cords I find if you just bend it uh, bend the the bracelet it'll spread apart so you can see your center cords underneath it's hard to see it on my camera it's just a cell phone camera I don't have any fancy equipment with me I'm out in my truck working today then again I should say I'm out in my truck working every day and this is just what I do when I work so I'm gonna go ahead and come right back through to that same hole trying to be careful not to because my fit is quite sharp trying to be careful not to puncture any of my cords tighten that up a little and then now that I'm back on my center I just continue that same pattern all the way across so I'm gonna go over two and then I go up down up and over two so I'm just gonna keep following that same pattern all the way through so I'll go ahead and do it one more time for you so over two and I go through again at an angle and when I get to the back side I flip it over and I'm just going to go over one and back up at an angle so that I end up right with my same cord. That way, on the back side, I have very little red showing at all. And now I can go ahead and go up. And I, I do have problems sometimes finding the correct path through the cord but again if you spread them apart just a little you'll find it might make it a little easier to get back in that slot where you want to be I'm getting a lot of knots on this one getting caught I guess that's what you get when you don't have great ways to store your cord or nice spools to pull them off where they're somewhat straight everything I've got is wrapped by hand because that's all I have I don't have a lot of space in my truck to store my paracord or my supplies everything's very minimalist and uh, when I get a, a request for an item or a project I have to order almost exactly just what I need just for that uh, that one order because I don't have the space that some of you guys have, a, you know, an entire room where I can just have a nice table and racks full of paracord. So now that I'm back at the bottom, I'm going to go right up to the next cord and work my way through and find my center. And once again, it's this one's a little tighter than the last one I did. So I'm going to spread apart my center and work my way right through in between and some of you may have followed me on Facebook a little bit here and there on the on the paracord on site I can get some of these knots out of here um, I'm the guy who does all the Cub Scout projects out of paracord and such for summer camp and things I enjoy doing stuff for them and 
I don't make money on this paracord. I do it for friends and family. I have lots of people asking me to make it for them, but it's something I've never done. So now we're going to go right down the center one more time. Through the back side. We're just going to go over one. And it kind of doesn't matter which way you uh which way you go. You'll just you'll know when you're through there which um which cord is uh is the cord that you're centered on. As long as you can pay attention to which cord you're centering on on the back side you'll be able to figure out which one to wrap because this line right here that I'm going through ends up landing on the top of a cord on the other side so by going at an angle through it um, by going at an angle through it like this all right like you can see here I'm going between two but I can then wrap the one and go at an angle this way to come back into the same hole and that allows me to just wrap one on this back side. So that way there's very little cord used on the back side, very little waste with this stitch, which is very nice, especially when you don't have enough money or uh, storage space to have a lot of cord. Uh, like I don't have a lot of space for it. So that allows me the ability to find ways to do my weaves so that I don't have quite as much waste of cord as I've seen on a few of the tutorial videos that I've watched on uh, on YouTube, I, I've been watching and, and looking at how they do their uh, their stitching and their weaving, and I've been trying to ask myself a lot: How can I make it so that I don't use as much cord as uh, oop, my fit pulled off as much cord as uh, as I see some of these guys doing? Um, because it seems to me that there's quite a bit of waste in uh, in cord from some of these guys. I think this fid's about worn out. It's not wanting to grab my cord very well. There, there we go. All right, <clears throat> might be time for me to buy new ones. Uh, just today, I, I saw a post. Uh, somebody was asking how to get the tip out of a out of a piece that broke off in there. And I had that happen to this exact fid that I'm using right now. And what I ended up doing was uh, using a very small drill bit, much, much smaller than the hole in the fid. And, uh, and I just by hand fed it in there and I was able to get that little piece out. Uh, other people were suggesting great ideas like um, to use a, another piece of, of paracord and heat it up and get it melted good and hot. And uh, it looked like they would need a fair amount of the melted liquid on the outside. To, uh, to do what they're suggesting, but they're suggesting heat it up and while it's good and hot, go ahead and stick it into the fid to try and get it to adhere to that piece that got stuck in there. And uh, apparently that worked for that person uh, on Facebook today. And I think that's some great advice. It's something I've never tried, but uh, the, the, uh, the drill bit worked good for me, but I think it may have worn down the little threads inside my fid which, uh, which may be part of my problem with this one grabbing the cord. Uh, may have worn down the, the little threads that hold on to the, the cord inside. Now, I know I'm nowhere near as exciting as all the other guys on, on the Paracord YouTube channels and such. This is not something that, uh, something that I normally do. I don't usually make videos of things. I'm a pretty plain Jane guy generally keep to myself but there's so much people so many people requesting this that I, uh, I wanted to do it for you guys and uh, and any of the other paracorders out there any of you guys that do professional paracord videos if this is what you do here's my permission right now I'm the guy who did this on Facebook originally and uh, I uh, I love the design I hope other people love the design it sounds like they do it sounds like nobody else had uh, Nobody else had thought of this prior to me, and I don't know why, but because uh, there's a lot of a lot of really smart people on there that I like to borrow ideas from myself. But if uh, if any of you guys who do real uh, real YouTube videos, back on the on the subject here, if any of you want to make a better video of how to do this, 
something that looks a little nicer, better lighting, <laughs> uh, better camera work, better commentary. For goodness sake, I'm terrible. Um, please do, and and when you do, um, go ahead and find me on Facebook. Send me a send me a link to it because uh, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of people asking me for uh, how to do this. And, I'd like somebody who's a little better at it to, to show them how to do it than me, because for me it's just something I do as a little bit of a hobby for friends and family and fellow truck drivers of mine. Um, getting ready to do a, an order of a modification on this for a friend of mine who wants a commemorative bracelet for her mother, which I thought was a great idea, um, so I'm working with her on, on doing that. And, uh, and another one is uh, for my cousin. We're going to do some bracelets to uh, raise money for a cause. Um, he's uh, been diagnosed with uh, muscular dystrophy, a version of muscular dystrophy, um, uh, DMD. I forget the, the actual name of it. Uh, but I shared a, I shared a, a link to a, a fundraiser they're doing on Facebook recently. And uh, one of the things that I... I'm planning on doing is trying to help them out and I'm gonna make a few uh, bracelets for them that they're able to uh, sell and I'm gonna give it to them at no charge and hopefully that little bit of money will help as well so and hopefully raise some awareness for people who uh, people who don't know about muscular dystrophy it's a terrible thing you know my uh, my cousin he's such a little guy He's only five years old right now, but he's such a little trooper. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pause this for you, and I'll come back when I get to the end and show you what we've got. I'm moving right along. I'm about halfway through. You can see that took me probably about 12 minutes or so. If I wasn't doing the commentary and paying a little more attention to what I was doing, I might have been able to do it just a little bit faster. Um, but I'm not the fastest person when it comes to doing paracord in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and I'll uh, see you guys in a moment when I'm just about ready to finish up. Alright, so we're coming to the end here. Sorry for the shaking there. Just uh, restarted the video there for you. Um, this was pretty interesting. On my last stitch here, I went right over where I had uh, where I had melted the the cord for my um, for my trilobite here. Um, again, as you can see, I like to pull it under a couple of the the stitches to help hold it under. But I still just treated this as if it was the cord that's underneath this. There's actually another cord underneath this, so I actually ended up tying my melted ends right to the red cord, which I think might actually be a nice way to help hold it and uh, give you a little softer surface for your wrist while you're wearing this. It's kind of nice. Um, anytime you can keep a nice flat surface. Um, they always talk about those uh, flattening tools that they use for the when they melt the cord on, uh, on the paracord um, tutorials on, on YouTube. Again, I don't have a lot of space for tools, so I don't have one of those tools and instead, what I use, believe it or not, is uh, just my, my little scissors, my uh, Westcott scissors that I got at Walmart <laughs> for, uh, for cutting the cord. And they're nice, flat, shiny surface, nothing sticks to it, and uh, doesn't...